Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Cloudy and I am failing my 2019 reading goal. And today I want to talk about it. I don't know yet if this video is going to become a rant, a bit of a whinging session or a defiance manifesto against defining your success by numbers. We'll see where it goes. But it all started when I looked at my uh, 2019 reading challenge on my Goodreads app on my phone and it says, Claudia, read one book a day for the rest of the year to complete your challenge. One book a day. Not very likely. So uh, at the moment I have completed 35 of my planned 60 books of the year. Now it would be kind of easy for me to say, oh, the numbers don't matter. The reading goal is just, it's just a silly thing. It doesn't really do anything. But the truth is at the beginning of the year, I specified that number, assuming I would be able to achieve it because there's no point setting yourself a goal that's completely unachievable, but also there's no point setting yourself a goal that's automatic. You know, even in a year where I basically don't read, I would probably still be able to read 10 books a year. So if I'd set my Goodreads reading goal for 10 books a year, then it wouldn't really be a challenge. If I'd set it for 150 books a year, then it would be inconceivable for me personally to ever get to that goal. I know some people read that much and more power to you. So I set it uh, for 60 books and that is actually what I set it to last year as well. And last year in 2018, I managed to read 60 books. In fact, I read 71 books out of my goal of 60. So I didn't really challenge myself any harder this year. I just failed to achieve that number, to reach that number. So why do I care? And the answer was pretty simple. I care because I set myself that goal. If I'd set myself a goal and then didn't care about achieving it or not, then why did I set myself that goal in the first place? I hope that makes sense outside of my own head as well. And then the next question, I guess, would be, what do I do about it? Well, um, nothing, because, you know, as much as I would have liked to achieve my reading goal of 60 books, I'm not going to set my life aside, stop eating, sleeping, working and spending time with people just to read one book a day for the rest of the year, just so I can achieve that goal, because that too would be silly. So I'm going to do nothing about it except whine at you about it and then think about what I'm going to change for next year. I could change the actual number. I could set myself a goal of, say, 30 books or 40 books. And I don't think I'll do that. I think knowing that I achieved this reading goal once before, means that it is achievable for me. My life hasn't really changed in the past two years. So um, since I was able to achieve my reading goal in 2018, I'm sure I'm capable of achieving it again in 2020. So what else am I going to change? Well, I somehow have to make it easier for me to reach that number. And one thing that I have been thinking about, although I will have to have a long, hard look at my budget and see if I can actually afford to, is to listen to more audiobooks. So I could either up my Audible membership from uh, one to two books a month, uh, which would cost me, I think, an extra £3.50 a month, or I could uh, see if I can find some free or cheap audiobooks to get separately. And that is one, I think, one really easy way for me to add an extra, an extra, well, an extra 12 audio books, an extra 12 read books to my total. But that is very much a budgeting question. I really have to have a look at my finances to see if that money is um, expendable income. Then I could also balance this out because on a separate issue, I've noticed that I have too many unread books. You can see my TBR behind me and it has grown quite a lot this year. Now, I don't think I've necessarily bought more books than I did last year, but I read fewer books than I did last year. So it only follows that my TBR has grown a bit more rather than remain roughly the same. So I might actively stop myself from buying books next year, or I might 
severely limit my book buying. I might, for example, allow myself uh, one book a month to buy. And then I guess the money that I save on books that I buy in charity shops, I could spend on audiobooks. Now, obviously, that conversion rate isn't one to one because while a book from a charity shop costs me 50p to about two pounds, an audiobook, you know, might be an extra three pounds fifty or upwards of that. So, again, that's something I'll have to weigh up, something where I have to really crunch the numbers. I'm a bit of a nerd, I'll probably make a spreadsheet about it and then see if that happens. The other thing that I could see myself doing is to put some reading time aside in the afternoon because at the moment I read in the mornings and that's all very nice but then I generally don't pick up a book again for the rest of the day and I don't read in bed anymore. So they're two separate issues really. I would like to maybe have a structured tea and reading break in, in my afternoon, so where I just move away from my desk, move away from work, sit in my living room with a book and a nice hot drink or a nice cold drink in the summer, although right now I find it hard to believe it will ever be summer again, uh, but, but for me to take a structured break and just read. And I think an extra half hour of reading every day would get me through quite a few extra books. And then reading at bedtime. I don't know when I stopped doing that, but I think it is because I go to bed so exhausted that I just don't have the energy to read. And part of that exhaustion, a big part of that exha exhaustion, is my insomnia, which is absolutely ridiculous. I can't sleep at night. Therefore, I go to bed really early so that, again, I can't sleep. Now, when I'm awake at night, not able to sleep, I don't get a book out either. And that is maybe something that I can change because reading off my Kindle at night is really easy. It's much easier than having to faff around with a paper book. So I could strategically position my Kindle on my bedside table and just always have a book going, maybe something that's quite easy to read, something that's quite light reading, so that I can read it when I'm exhausted and frustrated at night that I can't sleep. So these are all things that I can do to increase my chances of reaching the same goal next year. These are all changes, quite small changes really, if you think about it, that I can make in my life to uh, get more reading done. and. The last question that I'm sure some of you will have already typed in the comment section is why do you care about reading 60 books a year? Why do you want to change your life to achieve those things? Surely if you're not achieving it now, then it means that you just naturally shouldn't read that much. Well, I really bloody love reading though. I really love it. I really enjoy it. It does a lot for my mental health. It does a lot for my level of happiness. It does a lot for my brain's ability to think about things. I love reading. But reading is one of those activities that requires just that little extra push, just that little nudge you know, for me to pick up a book and open it and make the time to really truly engage in an activity that I love. And I'm sure most of you watching this video will be able to understand that because you too love reading or you wouldn't be watching this. Let me know how your reading goals are going now that we have uh, just about two weeks to go till the end of the year. Talk to me about whether you care about reading goals or not, uh, whether you are going to put your life on hold to read a book a day to keep your reading goal by the end of the year. And tell me if I'm wrong to care so much about it. Thank you for watching. Bye.